Nobody sings about tough times and rough love like a country singer. And maybe no one has lived those lyrics more than country singer Mindy McCready. Headlines about her exploded last week saying she was on the lam with the young son she had kidnapped. On the heels of a litany of troubles, drugs, jail, a suicide attempt, many people feared for the worst. But a seeming case of on the run for the singer six months pregnant with twins has now turned into a case of on the record as she sat down with ABC's Andrea Canning to tell her side of the story for the first time. So I had some years with the girls last night. Guys do it all the time. At age 20, Mindy McCready was a knockout Nashville sensation, a rising star in the world of country music with a number one hit, Guys Do It All The Time. Her album went multi-platinum. That was in 1996. Last week, she became famous all over again. Wendy, can you tell us what you did today? This time, for something very different. The troubled country star, Mindy McCready. Mindy McCready. Mindy McCready took her son. She kidnapped him. Can't even explain it. No word of where Xander is. That could land her in jail. in jail. I'm not a kidnapper. I'm not an unfit mother. I'm not a drug addict. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm none of these things that have been said about me. Just last week, McCready and her five-year-old son Xander were portrayed as the most wanted mother and son in America, until U.S. Marshals came to her boyfriend's home in Arkansas looking for Xander. He was screaming. He was screaming, please don't touch me, please don't touch me, please don't touch my mommy, please leave me alone, I want to be with my mommy. And I have McCready, about six bit, months actually. pregnant with twins, uh, agreed to an exclusive interview with 2020, saying she is finally ready to tell her side of the story. She describes the night one week ago as law enforcement overkill. She says she was terrified. Was it a polite knock on the door? It was in a SWAT fashion. They were all dressed up in SWAT team. They had um, riot gear on. Were guns drawn? Yes, assault rifles. Did Xander see any of this? And Xander saw all of it. The U.S. Marshals tell 2020 McCready was hiding in a closet with Xander in a neighboring house. McCready tells a different story. Were you hiding out in the closet like everyone has said? No. Where were you? We were sitting on a couch. Where did this come from that you were hiding in the closet? I think that it just makes a better story. Once upon a time, she opened for legends like Tim McGraw and George Strait. She was set to marry the Man of Steel, TV Superman Dean Cain. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you as long as you need. But then her skyrocketing career stalled. Personal problems landed the girl who sang about 10,000 angels in tabloid hell. A rumored affair with married baseball pitcher Roger Clemens, which he denies. A sex tape, suicide attempts, stories of substance abuse, jail time and she says an abusive relationship with aspiring singer Billy McKnight, a man she stood by even after she says he beat her nearly to death. There was one saving grace in that relationship, their son Xander, born in 2006. Xander saved my life. I just, I couldn't imagine loving something so much that instead of wanting to just lay down and die, I wanted to stand up and fight. McCready says her lowest point was in 2007, when she was serving six months in a county jail related to a drug charge. At the time, she thought the best option for her son was to leave him with her mother, Gail Inge. She says when Xander visited her in jail, he acted as if she was a stranger. I said, I've, I've got to change everything. Everything has got to change for him. You know, from that moment on, I really just... I, want, I wanted to be what he wanted me to be. McCready decided then and there to turn her life around when she got out of jail. She broke up with McKnight and, in an attempt to reclaim her life and career, appeared on the reality show Celebrity Rehab. When I was writing this song, I was in jail. I'm still standing right where you left me on a cold dark cloud with nowhere to fall but 
The lyrics are very telling about your life. They came from my heart and my soul. I had just lived through the impossible. I lived in spite of what I really felt like doing, which was giving up. I lived for Xander, and I live for him still. Little did she know her greatest challenge was still ahead, the battle to get her son back. McCready says her mother refused to hand him over, and the state of Florida agreed, saying the child belonged with his grandmother and not his mother. They had been fighting over Xander in the courts for years, until finally, this Thanksgiving, fed up with all the legal wrangling, McCready violated a judge's order, taking Xander from Florida, heading for the hills of Arkansas. I have tried to comply. I have tried to follow the rules of the court. I have tried to be heard through the system. I did what the system told me to do in overabundance. I did it for four years. And after four years, do you know what I got? Nothing. I didn't even get unsupervised visitation. Did you worry about the risk you were taking by taking Xander from Florida to Arkansas? No. Um, I'm his mother. I would risk anything. Uh, my life, uh, my freedom. I would risk anything for my child. These two children, I would risk anything for them. Still will today. Did you knowingly break the law, taking no. Xander from Florida to Arkansas? I do not to this moment and will not ever think that me taking my own child that I carried for nine months uh, that I gave birth to in the hospital by myself would ever be uh, breaking the law. And what I did was to protect my child. And there's not a person in the world that's ever going to tell me that that is wrong. Surprisingly, police in Cape Coral, Florida seem to agree. They tell 2020, in spite of what you may have heard, McCready didn't break any laws or commit any crimes. And what was reported as a harebrained kidnapping may yet turn out to be a shrewd legal strategy. It gives McCready another shot at making her case for custody, this time in an Arkansas court. On Monday, she painted the judge a picture of Xander's life with his grandmother and legal guardian, Gail Inge, who went on TV tearfully calling for her daughter to come home. I'd like to see her reconcile with us. We love her. On the grandmother's Facebook page, they are a loving, happy family, or so it appears. She looks like a sweet 55-year-old grandma. That sweet grandmother is not sweet at all. What kind of things does Xander tell you about what went on in the house? He says that Nana, that's what he calls my mom, is so mean that her heart is black. <laughs> and that she's so mean she doesn't know how to be nice anymore. But it's not only the word of a five-year-old. Inge's own mother, Mindy's grandmother, swears in this affidavit obtained by 2020 that she witnessed Xander being subjected to harsh discipline, jerked by the arm, hit with a wooden spoon. She says she feared Xander would be physically harmed permanently. There are scars on Xander's back. There are scars on uh, his bottom and his legs from the spoon. The affidavit also cites the Inge's bizarre cultish beliefs. Do you know anything about her religion, Treasures of the Snow, <laughs> and, and what it's about and how it might be affecting Xander? My mother, you know, believes that she is a prophet sent from God. They see dead people in their home all the time, or spirits, demons, ghosts. Gail Inge denies she believes those things. McCready says there was very little happiness in her childhood home. It was so bad, she says she and her brothers left as soon as they could. I grew up where I suffered every day, where I suffered every night, where the, the mental and physical abuse never ended. We never... Gail Inge denies she abused her own children and she tells 2020, I have been Xander's guardian for four and a half years. There has been all kinds of scrutiny he has never been abused in our care. But on Monday, McCready came out of the Arkansas courtroom on cloud nine. I can't talk about it, but I'll tell y'all I'm a happy girl. What are you happy about? Can't talk about it, but I'm a happy girl right now. I love Judge Herod, I'll tell you that. Love that man. He's a good man. Why do you love him? Do you love He's him? He's a good man, I love Judge Herod. See y'all later. 
You were all smiles when you left that courthouse. What, what was so good that happened in there? Oh gosh, I wish I could tell you that um, everything is sealed. Put it this way, um, Xander is in Arkansas and this is where he's going to stay for the time being. You've had a rocky road to get to this point where you are right now. How can anyone trust you that you will continue to be a good mother and stay on this path that you are on? I have, you know, vigorously gone out and tried to learn from my mistakes and tried to better myself in every way possible. There's nobody that wants to be better at being me than me. <laughs> McCready says things are finally going her way. Come on, kissy. She's in a committed relationship Come with on, the father kissy. of her twins Come who are due this winter. I'm still standing. She's also writing new music inspired by her journey. Would you sing a couple lines for us from your one of your new songs? Are you kidding? Uh my goodness. Um, when I was missing Xander so much, I was lonely for him. And one of the songs that we've just recently recorded is called I Could Be Lonely Anywhere. And um, though it's hard to sing right now with me be crying, but uh, I could be lonely. I could be lonely. I could be lonely anywhere. And you're thinking about Xander when you sing that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm lonely anytime he's not near me, so, yeah. And this year's Christmas wish? If all goes as planned for you, when do you think you'll be with Xander permanently? Could it be by Christmas time? I hope that that's what I get for Christmas. I hope so. I really do. I'm still here. Xander is currently in foster care in Arkansas where Mindy saw him today. Her next court appearance is next week when she will continue to argue to bring him home permanently.